hello and thanks for clicking on the video link okay so today i'm going to talk about uh, on a very interesting topic so i recently stumbled upon it uh, yesterday when i was watching java puzzlers and in that i came across this polygene lubricants uh, these are very fascinating uh, fascinating problem puzzler in java so uh, today i'm going to uh, talk about this and try to explain what are polygene lubricants. So if you have not heard about polygene lubricants before It's like a tongue twister like so don't worry this video is going to uh, give you all of that So let's quickly create a package name um, Code with Warren because that is what we are going to do and we are doing right now and here I'm going to create a class histogram and Let's create a test class as well you know, with tests, it is so much easier to execute any part of your code. I always recommend test cases first. Uh, let's keep it very simple for now. Only name it test. Then let's create a class, histogram, new histogram. Mm. Run. Maybe this will do for now. And you know one more thing, uh, this is a very cool thing, in Java 11, you can do something like this where, I really like this, it's very short and crisp. Okay, so here we're going to create a list of strings, let's call them words, and um, I recommend polygene, oops, made a mistake, lubricants. So we are going to create a little small program where we are going to calculate the hash code of each of the pair of the words. So let me write the code. That way it is much easier to understand. So I'm going to iterate over all the words twice. And left and right. And we are going to create a, <coughs> a pair of these words. Let's come by little left and right. So now we have a pair of these words. So what it, this will do is it will iterate over each word uh, to write. So first, first uh, the left will be I, I, then I recommend, then I polygene, then I lubricants, and then recommend I, recommend, recommend, poly, recommend polygene, and so on. So that is what a pair is. And uh, now we will create one array in which we are going to calculate the frequency of each pair so um, so so it, the index of this will be left press right dot hash code mod by the length of this hash hash code so uh, here are four uh, items in the array so and we're iterating them twice so it will be no more than 16 so we can limit this to let's say 16 or whatever number we are going to decide for the length uh, so 5 okay and let's let's separate it out that way it is easier to read so let's call it um, bucket oh I only replaced that part so let's call this a bucket and we will increment the whatever the number is there in that bucket by one every time we find we hit the same pair and let's remove it and call it pair that's why we created that variable okay let's quickly create the histogram as well we want this to be an integer array and uh, new int so we limited the size to five let's move it up mm, let's also call it like histogram dot length uh, that way it is easier cool so we have created one uh, frequency counter here so let's calculate the frequency of each pair starting from zero let's do a string um, 
so now we have to iterate over the histogram so it will be frequency of each word in the histogram each pair in the histogram and uh, then we are going to add that to our pair count so it will be no more than 16 because that is the total number of total number times the loops a loop has executed so let's print out um, what okay it's eclipse and intelligent confusion always okay so I'll print out C plus the pair count so uh, C is the character here and pair count should be 16 according to me so it should be C plus 16 or uh, it is like D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R okay just count 16 and it should print that character so um, I want you to go through this code once again and then I'll come back and we'll execute and see what should be the output of this code okay so I'm going to pause the video here hey I'm back okay so I just initialized a git repository and pushed the code there because that's good practice okay so let's uh, run this code and see what output do we get okay um, get added out saying the index minus 4 is out of bound um, okay so I suspect this hash code value is negative so let's uh, wrap it around math.absolute so that it is positive and we should no longer get this minus 4 index run it again get added out again and this time it is not minus 4 but minus 3 okay so let's uh, uh, look further like which word is giving us a negative uh, integer which cannot be turned into its complementary positive so let's print out the pair to find out the problematic one and run again so now we'll get a list of strings yeah so the word is polygene lubricants and uh, this is the mystery actually this is the puzzler which uh, Joshua Bloch found out one day when uh, when he was working with some histogram or something so he was like uh, printing out the hash code values of each and every combination of word in the dictionary and that is where it, he came across this word polygene lubricants okay so now that we have this word let's see what is actually happening uh, let's try to dissect the string in uh, jshell this is another cool feature that java 11 offers so if you haven't tried jshell then do try it. it's very very helpful so we will check like why this polygene lubricant was giving a negative number so we have this uh, hash code value and if we do math dot oh uh, sorry not pause this absolute so it is giving us a negative number that we have seen in our code here so it is giving us minus two one four seven four eight three six four eight and if you look at this number this number is so very familiar to all the java developers because this number is the same as min value of the integer so why it gives us a negative number when we have wrapped it around math.apps because if we check the integer dot max value it only goes so far till 647 and uh, it doesn't find the uh, the complement positive of 648 in the positive number in the integer so it gives us the same number back which is the uh, integer dot minimum value so this is not uh, a mystery as such the, the problem that we faced here is the is in the part where we are calculating the hash code values for these numbers so why the hash code value uh, is coming to this point so for that let's uh, see the hash code value of a simple one character string that is a so it is 97 similarly b will be 98 because these are unicode values and uh, uh, if you don't trust me then we can check it like this so if we, if i convert the character into an integer directly it will get print out 99 uh, which is one more than b so these are indeed hash code uh, these are indeed uh, unicode numbers okay so but what happens when we combine a b together and then try to calculate the hash code so it gives us this uh, number 3105 
and suppose let's take another uh, number let's say cd and find out the hash code of that string uh, and it gives out 3169 but we when, but when we combine ap and the cd and uh, hash it we get 39870074 so what is happening so for this i take a little bit uh, inside the uh, the hash code function in which java calculates the hash code of every object so there i found that it takes the first uh, string it finds the hash code for that okay so uh, the hash code of this number a or uh, this string a multiplied by 31 times the length 31 31 power the length of the second string which is 1 so we will we won't write anything plus the string b dot hash code the hash code of the second string so it gives us 3105 which is same as ab now let's take ab hash code and uh, combine ab with cd so we will multiply 31 into 31 two times because the length of the second string is 2 which is cd and plus the hash code of the second string so it will give us 2987074 which is same as this one uh, so this is how uh, in, in it is implemented in Java to calculate hash code. So this is a uh, Horner's method of calculating hash code. This is a scientist who ca came up with this uh, method, and it makes sure that uh, that the uh, the hash code which is getting generated will be uh, equally divided in this space. So it should not happen that uh, uh, while calculating the hash code of one number again and again you're getting the same number for different uh, values so uh, that won't be uniform that won't be even it will it will add up to the complexity of the program so this uh, method makes sure that uh, the hash code which is generated for different uh, values are are perfectly uniform okay so now we know like how this uh, this hash code is calculated so can we write a program to find out all the polygene numbers present in a dictionary so I think now with this knowledge we can write a program on that so let's uh, do that okay. so let's uh, create a class and call it uh, hmm, polygene finder just because of a lack of a better word I just give it polygene finder here and uh, uh, as always we'll create a test class for the same okay so we'll write a simple test for this one as well um, let's it should uh, print all the polygene finder polygene words let's say and then we'll create a class a polygene finder uh, the object of this class not test and origin finder dot print all this makes sense okay so we have this method here so one way to print this is uh, um, we can simply iterate over the words and like like we did before we can iterate over the word twice and uh, and find out which word has the minimum integer value the hash code of the word that has the minimum integer value is a polygene word so uh, let's uh, let's do that so um, instead of giving the word myself we will read the word from the dictionary um, so in java 8 so after java 8 i guess we have this uh, wonderful files library from where we can simply read all lines and we have to pass in the path object and uh, the path uh, so we can use our uh, local linux dictionary which is available to everyone who is working on a linux or a mac so user share dictionary and uh, 
I think the words uh, I see file. Yeah, I will find out. It is giving me error. Mm -hmm. Try catch. Let's print out the error yeah, for now. Okay, so it will give me a. Uh, I think the array of all the words. Um, let's call it words. Mm -hmm. Okay, it gives uh, the list of all the strings. No worries. So let's convert it into arrays. To array of string and like write it like this so it will give me a, the array of strings so we have this array of words read from the dictionary so as I was saying the first and the most easiest way of doing this is uh, by iterating over the words and uh, the same logic that we wrote before and and print out the word whose uh, hash code value is same as the integer dot min value. So if we find any word that is or that contains the hash code of which is same as the integer dot min value, then we know that we have found our polygy number, and we will print that string. So let's. Uh, test out this whether it is printing all the polygon finder words or not from the dictionary okay it's taking time so at least we have found the dictionary this path is correct otherwise we would have got the io exception okay, it is taking quite a lot of time oh finally we have our first uh, polygene string so if we go back to our j shell and we check the hash code we will get the integer dot min value nice so this program is working but it is taking a lot of time let's pause it here and and time this uh, uh, this uh, program like how much time is it actually taking so let's create a class called timer uh, that will uh, deconstruct it will take a runnable job and uh, we will record the milliseconds like before and after and then subtract it so we will know how much time it took to run that job now we'll say job.run and then we will print out uh, mm, what should we print out a total time taken and the decimal value in milliseconds so now we will pass the time which is system dot current uh, millis subtract the start time so the current time subtract the, uh, the start time will get the time consumed by this job in between awesome so we'll go back and uh, let's Put it into a method. Uh, analyze uh, word pair. If that, uh, yeah, I think that makes sense, right? We are doing that, and we will time it. So we'll pass this as a new runnable inner class, and inside the run method, we'll pass our analyze word pair. Okay, what is this error? I think. Okay, I missed the bracket. Cool. So this is how we can pass uh, the function. It will give us. It will print the time. How much time it take took to to run this program. So let's uh, run the test again and see how much time it takes. And in Java 11, we can uh, not in Java 11 since Java 8 we have lambdas, so we can write it in uh, a very beautiful way like simply pass in the function inside a lambda and give it words. That's all. This is like I really like this uh, technique. 
so okay so I'm going to pause my video here because this program is taking a lot of time so once it is done I'll resume it again finally it took 46 minute to run this program it was a mistake I shouldn't have run this without uh, optimizing this one oh my god <laughs> okay so to be precise it took uh, this many milliseconds so if we go to a GA shell and convert it into a into minutes it's 2811 oh my god it's it took a it took a lot of time okay so so it took 2811 seconds to complete which is around 46 minutes okay so I have committed the code now so um, let's move forward and see how can we optimize this piece of code because it took 46 minutes that is not acceptable uh, so uh, in this we see we have two for loops which is not good and inside that we have we have this pair for which we are calculating the hash code and this operation is uh, is very costly so let's try to get rid of this one first uh, so we go back to JShell let's clear this oops let's clear this thing and <clears throat> if we take the word polygene We get this value, and we, if we take the word for lubricants, we get this number. So, in order to calculate uh, the the hash code of, of this combined word polygene lubricants, we will have to do something similar that we did before. So, we'll take the f the hash code of the first string, and uh, we will multiply 31 times the length of the uh, the second string, which is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we'll, we have to multiply 31 10 times. So we'll do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You must be wondering why I'm not using math.pow. Just wait a second, I'll come to that. So if we multiply it by the hash code of the second string, we should get uh, a integer dot a minimum value yes so why I didn't do math dot power 31 times 10 because if you see <coughs> if uh, if I do 31 times 2 it gives uh, a double value back so if if I do this for a larger number uh, like a number like 10 it will start giving me a garbage value uh, that is because uh, it overflows and in the double value the overflow is different as compared to the integer so that's why we cannot uh, use the math.pow for this we'll have to calculate the powers of 31 ourselves so here the uh, our objective is to uh, if to create some kind of lookup table where we can enter the length of the second string so that we can get the uh, get the powers of 31 related to that so that we don't have to calculate this big big number and it will save us millions of calculations so I think this itself is going to be a pretty massive improvement in our code so let's try to try to do that so if we are we were creating hash we were calculating hash so our hash is going to be left uh, so the hash code of the first string multiplied by the powers of 31 uh, and uh, this powers is dependent on the length of the right string plus the right dot hash code this is the same thing that uh, we just did in jshell so this should work right so we can get rid of this pair here or it's okay we can keep it for to print this and in place of this hash code we can write hash so if this hash is equal to the minimum integer value then we'll print out the number because we know that that uh, this is the polygene number so now we have to work on this powers of 31 so let's create a field integer it should be integer array so let's calculate the powers of 31 so I'll go back to my test class let's create a function uh, sandbox that is what we are doing let's calculate the powers of 31 
uh, goal starts with one till I think 64 the powers of 64 will be sufficient because we have 26 alphabets and small plus capital it will be 26 plus 26 52 and number so I think 64 will be sufficient and increment I then X multiplied times 31 so it will give us the powers of 31 then that's let's print that out mm, D with a comma so, X is that power of 31 let's see what we get this seems to be correct let's verify we should get 29791 if we do times 3 31 times 3 29791 correct and for the power of 2 it was 961 so yeah I think this uh, this piece of code is working fine uh, but we can do it much in a much more a uh, better and beautiful way of using lambdas so we have this stream there's a factory method and it has this iterate which which takes two parameter the first one is the seed value so we'll seed it uh, by one and in the second it takes the lambda like what you want to do with the numbers so if we were getting x we'll multiply it times 31 the same thing that we are doing in the loop logic and then we'll limit it we want only 64 powers <coughs> then we can map it to object uh, value of so we'll, it will take that integer and convert it into a string and then we will move out from the realm of stream to the collect uh, collect realm so for that we we have this collect method and we can join the result by comma simple and to make it even more beautiful we can remove this uh, collectors we can import it statically and there we go so we will have a string with powers of 31 delimited by a comma so uh, in this you get one more benefit that you don't have the last comma that we had here it will only have 63 commas and it will automatically remove the last one this is the this is the benefit that we get from this joining so now let's take it in a string powers of 31 and let's print. Uh, I think we can remove this code we don't need it anymore so let's print out powers of 31 we should get the similar result yeah 13190 is cool so we're good and you see the comma is not there at the end I always prefer joining so let's copy this entire string and put it here so now we have a lookup for the powers of 31 so this code should be more optimized than before uh, it is not the not the not the highest level of optimization but uh, to start with we have reduced a lot of millions of calculations so it should be faster than before so I'll just run it one more time and see how much time do we save so just remember the last time we ran it we got 46 minutes 53 seconds and uh, this time I think it, sh it, it should be much much less than that let's run it hmm. so if it is going to take more than 20 seconds then I'm going to pause the video again and then I'll resume it back once the program has run successfully but I'm sure that time will be much less than what we uh, encountered before okay so already it has found the first string which is a polygene to verify I know this is a polygene but just to manually verify that this is equal to the integer dot min value so these are the polygene strings uh, let's see what happens I'll it is taking more time than that so I'll come back once the program is done see you bye bye hey I'm back so I left the code uh, running and I went somewhere stepped out so I came back now and I committed the code and took the reading so this time it took 40 minutes to run 
and uh, which was a uh, improvement but not what i expected to be i was thinking like it would save a ton of time uh, but that didn't happen so we will have to move towards the second optimization so we left the code in this condition uh, so here the op so the further optimization that, that i can think of is uh, is in the second for loop uh, so uh, if if we can find something that can uh, reduce the iteration the second iteration uh, because i checked these words in the dictionary and it crosses 2.5 million so there are approximately or more than 2.5 million words in the dictionary and this outer uh, loop is running for 2.5 million times then this inner loop is running 2.5 million million times because for each uh, outer loop it is running 2.5 million times so that is the reason why it is taking so much time still i'm impressed that it was completed in 40 minutes uh, but let's try to reduce this for loop so so let's go back uh, to our j shell and play a little bit more about uh, with this with this thing i'll clean this up and or let's reset in uh, reset it and start from the beginning so we had a word polychain that gave us a hash code of this and then we had a word lubricants that gave us a hash code of this so the, the thing that we did to calculate the hash code of these two words is that we took polygene hash code and we multiplied 31 10 times 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 9 10 and then we added the hash code of lubricants which is dollar 2 so this gave us a integer dot min value so can we do something like if we know the hash code of this one and the length of the second word can we find the second hash code without actually calculating it so what i'm trying to say is if we do something like min value minus dollar one so we know that we are looking for this hash code and if this this code is present anywhere in my lookup table then i know that this word is a polygene right so so let's get back to a code and see if we could if we could do something like that if we could come up with a data structure that will enable us to pass this and get back this so let's uh, let's take this part where we were reading the words and go back to our uh, sandbox i'll comment this out for the, for a moment because we don't need it anymore and i put it here so it will uh, read me 2.5 million words and reading is real fast it took some millis and then i'll have an array of words now what i want to do is i want to group them uh, by length and hash code so so if i pass this then i can get this something like that so i'm going to group it with that first so I'm not going to do with the Java 7 syntax because it is going to uh, take a lot of lines of code and it, is, it, it might get messy. So I'll directly move on to Java 8. So we have words. Uh, we'll have to wrap it in arrays dot as list. We'll put the array here and we'll stream through the words. And we have to collect and group by first the string dot length and then so le let me show you what it gives back so it will give me a map of integer which is length of the string and the list of the word itself so let me show you what it what it gives what happened Mm -hmm. okay i have to import uh, the map as well cool so if now now if i do something like uh, output dot get 
and passes past the length of the string. Suppose I want all the words in the dictionary which has a length 2. So it will give me that. This is what I have done here. So here it gave me all the words which are present in the dictionary which consist of length 2. And I do not see any collision here so far. Uh, that is good. So let's uh, move and do, uh, do a grouping again. But this time we will group it by uh, let's say we will group by uh, hash code oh okay 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 I have to put it inside the grouping what happened oh, okay now I have to change this uh, so now it is giving me a map of hash code which is an integer and a list of words cool so now if I do the same thing uh, and so it will give me uh, so earlier it was giving me the string itself now it will give me the hash code of each of these strings correct so this is the hash code and this is the string two letter string and I still don't see any collision maybe if we if I write a write a bigger word can I try a bigger word here and see if we find any collision I mean we should get collisions um, mm -hmm. wow so far no collision but but I'm sure there in 2.5 million words there will be some collision here okay no worries so we have a data structure here now let's take this piece of code to our original method let's paste it here um, let's name it something useful meaningful by length and by hash code or let's just keep it hash and let's break it from here this way it is more readable cool okay so now what I want to do is I want to iterate over this uh, map and it will give me length and the hash hash of the string associated string which are with with, uh, with the same length or what all strings are associated with that and then uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, take this part I'm going to put this part in and I should get this in right so so let's uh, let's do that so we have this left dot hash code where's my left dot hash code oh it's inside this loop okay just just uh, comment this one out for for a moment but uh, we will we will need this and instead of uh, <coughs> for loop let's uh, stream it array start uh, as list words dot stream dot for each word for each left we can say left right yeah, this is the first loop so we will get the left one so now we have the left word coming in this is just a single loop imagine this is the outer loop that we had here so we don't need this so this is the loop that we are going to code now we are we are trying to eliminate this loop uh, with um, sure it will be a loop but it will be a much much smaller loop because now we only have to iterate over the length and uh, i don't think that any english word is more than 56 characters so uh, the maximum the loop will iterate is the 56 length so i think that that is that is a way way uh, less iteration as compared to this 2.5 for each each outer loop so cool so now what we need is we need to calculate the left hash code multiply it by the powers of 31 uh, as raised to the power of the length of the second word so this the length of the second word that I'm getting from here and if we 
uh, if we subtract this with the integer of min value we will get our target hash I hope I make sense here uh, so let me let me check once again so we have our left word so this is the same thing that we did uh, here so we have this left hash code multiplied by the length of the words and we will get the tar target hash okay so far so good now we have to find the hash dot target hash this will give me all the strings that contains the uh, the target hash so it could be more than one word so in case of polygene lubricants it could be polygene lubricants polygene a b c d x polygene something so it will give me all the words that will make a polygene so that is what we are targeting here so if we get this so this is this will give me a list of uh, words right what happened okay words is already defined oh, oh, oh I don't need this actually I can directly put it in uh, in a for loop so I need uh, the right from this and uh, I will print out the left plus right these are all the polygene lubricants that will be printed here and I am missing one edge condition if suppose there's nothing this suppose this hash is null so uh, if there's no uh, rights for that left so we would need to pass a empty list instead and we can always beautify it by importing it statically like so okay I think this code looks pretty awesome <laughs> But uh, but let's uh, run and see whether it is working or not. And there are there are other scope for improvement. Uh, mm, this is saying so. So we'll we'll check that out. So now now before running the program, I want to check my my stats. So earlier it was forty minutes. The original it was forty three minutes. So now let's see what and how much time it will take this time. So I'm going to run the program. Uh, let's find out whoa amazing only 518 milliseconds and it printed out all the polygene words that's that's a dramatic improvement in the in the process time let's uh, run it again 561 one more time it's amazing 556 okay and just to be sure these are polygene words let me show you the hash code value of these words these are integer dot min values this is a dramatic improvement uh, let's uh, put this time in our list so this is 556 milliseconds oh my god that's that's a dramatic improvement so this time it only took oh my god it's a uh, 2 to the power of 2 to the power of around 6 to 15 2 to the power 12 or 15 something something approximately close to that times improvement awesome and we saved <laughs> we saved 40 40 odd minutes <laughs> nice cool let's go back and see if we can make any more improvements to this first of all I am repeating these things again twice so let's uh, it is giving me some suggestion maybe I can implement this array dot streams cool nice let's see if this change helps us save something on this so earlier it was 556 let's run it again oops I ran the sandbox <laughs> 523 it did uh, improve the performance by by some time or maybe it was just the noise 586 no 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 any visible improvement so what if we can we can take this out into a variable mm, word stream nice name and run the test again 
Okay, what happened this time? Oh, stream has okay, okay. It it gave me a stream which I don't want. I wanted it to give me a collection. Okay, I'll do it myself. List of string word stream and arrays dot as list words. I think this will improve uh, the performance, but uh, not really sure. Okay, so same I'm going to do here as well. Uh, word stream dot stream. Uh, okay, what is this? Okay, cool. Much more crisp. So let's see now. Again, I ran the sandbox. <laughs> I don't think we made any uh, visible improvement okay so let's try to paralyze this pa not paralyze like parallel processing <coughs> so in place of for each I can do parallel or it should be I don't know what's happening okay I'll put parallel here because that's a map my bad my bad so I can do parallel streaming here and let's see if this is saving me anytime so uh, my PC has six cores and it's 2.2 gig six core with 16 GB RAM so I think there will be a drastic improvement uh, let's see oh we it, there's an improvement for more than 100 milliseconds this time 150 millisecond improvement okay it's close to 100 150 uh, let's see if we can parallelize th this one as well dot stream dot parallel and see if because parallelizing itself has some overhead so most of the time it doesn't work but uh, with such a big database there will be sh the sure will be some improvement mm, nah it, it has the adverse effect here in this case uh, no significant improvement no I think it was better without paralyzing this one awesome so we have managed to bring our time from 43 minutes 53 seconds to just 345 milliseconds I'll add this final recording to my list of optimizations and improvement and here we saved approximately 20 to uh, 200 millis that is milliseconds I hope you enjoyed this video because uh, this concept when I first learned about this it was very very interesting to me and I thought that I will create one entire video on this one and th that is why I created this one and thanks 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 for watching this and uh, do share subscribe and ring the bell because that really helps this video to uh, to reach to many people like-minded people so thank you thank you very much see you next time bye bye